Hi, I'm Nikki, the Obsessive Bookseller. Welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to review Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. From everything Booktube is saying about this title, I was expecting to have a pleasant experience with it. What I was not expecting is to set it down with all those warm, fuzzy feelings that people say they get from it. That's exactly what happened. It was exactly as charming as people say it is. And there are a few specific reasons why I think the book worked so well for me. I love renovation shows. If there's a renovation show available, I will make sure I see every single episode. I also really love cooking shows, specifically cooking competitions. And even though there's not a cooking competition in this, it still has the same kind of atmosphere. So in a sense, this book is giving me all of the kicks that I usually get from watching like HGTV and Food Network. And I really eat that stuff up. It was a very satisfying experience for me in a very unexpected way. But I will note, like, I really like the taste of coffee, but caffeine just, like, does not agree with me. But this book made me crave coffee like you wouldn't believe, and I can't have any. <laughs> so if you go into it, this is the kind of thing that you would sit in a comfy chair with a hot cup of coffee and a snack, because you're gonna get hungry. Another thing I really love in stories is this kind of slow burn momentum where, like, you get to see things kind of grow from the ground up. And it's a very satisfying journey in this case. And I love the camaraderie. I love the, the relationships between the characters in this book. And I think it all worked well because the writing was good. The basic writing style allowed for some really slow, poignant moments that like really drew you into the story and the plight of the characters, even though it's, as they say, not very high stakes. But it gave a moment to really enmesh in this world and appreciate what's going on. So I found myself a lot more emotionally invested than I thought I would be. I didn't go in grumpy, I went in hopeful, but even so I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. And among all of these fun elements, there was actually an interesting external conflict going on besides just the coffee shop aspect. I was not expecting that. And although it wasn't particularly complex, it was still fun and meaningful and gave the gave a problem to the characters for them to solve, essentially. And I, I was not expecting that much rich storytelling. I was thinking it was just going to be more day in the life, which had a lot of, but yeah, there was a lot more substance here than I really expected going in. I did a video a few weeks back about booktube hype and kind of gave like my perspective on the whole thing. Some of it really bothers me, but in instances like this where I pick up books that I wouldn't have otherwise simply because booktube has put it on my radar and end up loving it yeah so the system is not all bad there are some good things about it obviously overall it was a total delight i recommend picking it up in between other more denser reads and i'm coming in at a solid four out of five stars and i think i'd like one for my collection i got this one from the library but i really liked it i thought it was just so much fun and i could see myself reading it again one day Let's talk about other books you might like. First on the list, I, I really like Legends and Lattes because of the, you know, cooking and renovation aspect. If your addictive serial show of choice is Storage Wars, then Minimum Wage Magic is the book for you. This is by Rachel Aaron. It's the first book in the trilogy. I will say this is a spinoff of the Heart Strikers series, so you may want to read that one first because it's awesome, but you'll, there's some spoilers in here for that one. The background to this girl's career is essentially a storage wars person where she bids on units and sees what she can salvage from them. It's entirely satisfying. And as it happens, her family is a drag, are dragon shifters. So on top of that, you've got dragon shifting, you've got a cool setting, and you've got storage wars. What's not to love? Joust by Mercedes Lackey. One of my favorite things about Legends and Lattes was the really integral slow day in the life aspect and if you like day in the life stuff and want to spend a day in the life of someone taking care of a dragon, this is a great pick. I recommend this one a lot. It's one of my all-time favorites. I recently reread it after 20 years and it did hold up. For a standalone that's incredibly satisfying with fantasy elements, I recommend Race the Sands by Sarah Beth Durst. This is one of the funnest books I've ever read. I really enjoyed it. It has to do with the competition and racing beasts and kind of takes a like 
horse racing aspect, but with magical creatures, that kind of thing. It's a bit bigger than Legends and Lattes, but no less satisfying. And I think for me, this one leaned more towards feel-good fantasy than a lot of the others on my recommendation list. And I think that's why it immediately came to mind when I finished Legends and Lattes. And I probably should have started with this one, but House on the Cerulean Sea is an excellent comparison. Um, the difference is Legends and Lattes was a lot more concise and the plot got going a lot quicker. Whereas House on the Cerulean Sea takes a while to get going and that was probably my only criticism about it. But yeah, similar kind of feel good things and uh, like the slow moments in this series will resonate with you with the slow moments in Legends. So yeah, definitely a really strong comparison. So a lot, I know a lot of my viewers have read House on the Cerulean Sea. So yeah, you might bump Legends and Lattes up in the priority list if you liked that one. And finally, I'm recommending this one even though I had a few personal issues with it and didn't love it. Uh, written in Red by Anne Bishop. So... Going back to the day in the life thing, you spend a lot of time with this woman as she like works a mailroom in a magical town. It's kind of got like a werewolf aspect to it. It's a really interesting read and I think it has, I think I was expecting something more robust with Written in Red, but ended up getting something more like Legends and Lattes, but wasn't expecting it and so didn't like it as much. If I'd gone in knowing it was a bit like lower stakes and wouldn't focus on the, the uh, interesting things about the world but would just be kind of more mundane. Gosh I'm really not selling it very well but if you like the general mood of Legends you'll probably like the mood of this one. It takes a more urban fantasy approach. And that's the review. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to take a minute to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. So thank you for joining me on this review and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.